Last week, we talked about your promised land. This week, we're going to talk about your wall of Jericho. It's going to be a good Monday morning. Good Monday morning. When Philly and I first married, I um, was already in a routine in my life of doing a fast at the beginning of the year. And this was a whole new world for me. I was 40 when Philly and I married, and I had never had children of my own, and I married a man with five. And the word to me over and over during that season was Joshua 1-9, be strong and courageous. And so right before my fast was over, about seven days before my fast was over, I was listening to a message by T.D. Jakes about the walls of Jericho, and that had just been the theme of my fast. And so I felt like the Lord spoke to my heart and said, I want you to do what the children of Israel did before they entered the promised land. They walked around the walls of Jericho. So I'm a pretty literal person. So in the middle of January, the very first morning, I had seven days of this season of fasting left. And I put on my heavy coat. I got up really early so Philly wouldn't see me because I already, he was like Baptist. I was raised Pentecostal, so I already thought he, thought he thought I was crazy. So I put on my coat and I walked around our house one time, just like the children of Israel did when they walked around the wall of Jericho. And for the next seven days, I did move indoors because it's really cold outside. So I moved indoors and for the next seven days, I walked around my home. And on the seventh day, just like the children of Israel, which we'll read in a minute, I walked seven times and there are seven of us in our family And I began to pray, and as I prayed over them, I felt like the Lord gave me really specific prophetic words for their lives and their story. And so when I got finished, I wrote them all down. And that morning I did my devotion after I prayed because I wanted to hurry up and, and walk so Billy didn't see me. And so I got my devotion out that morning and the very first sentence of my devotional that day was the walls of Jericho have fallen. And in that moment, I knew that every prayer I had just prayed was a promise to my heart from my heavenly father Over the next 10 years, I had no idea the walls that we'd need to see fall. But I can tell you 10 years later, we have seen so many of them come crashing down. Those children of Israel that had a promise of a promised land, the generation of unbelief never saw it. So here Joshua comes after Moses and he's going to be the one to take the children of Israel into the promised land. But they are facing one last obstacle and it's this wall called Jericho. And this is what scripture says they did in Joshua 6.1. It says, Jericho was shut up tight as a drum because of the people of Israel. No one was going in and no one was coming out. And God spoke to Joshua, look sharp now, like, Get it together now, Joshua. I've already given Jericho to you. Just like he had told the generation of unbelief, he's reminding Joshua, Joshua, this land's already yours. Okay, I've already given it to you. I just need you to be obedient. So what does Joshua, he tell Joshua to do? He says, you you put your army together, you march, and then you put your praisers in with your army. And so they're gonna blow the trumpets. And you're gonna walk one time each day for six days. And on the seventh day, you're gonna walk seven times. And at the end of that seventh trip, you're going to let those people bring forth a shout like they've never shouted before. And the beautiful thing is that on all those other trips, Joshua told them, don't you say a word. Don't you open your mouth until I tell you to shout. Why? Because it had been their words of unbelief that had kept them out of the promised land the last time. Do you know what? When they kept their mouths shut and the praisers went out and they let that final shout out, those walls of Jericho fell. 
There have been many times over these 10 years that we've faced some mighty big walls in the lives of our children. But do you know what? I've never spoken unbelief over them because God gave me a promise that the walls of Jericho had already fallen. What is your wall today? What needs to fall for you? Maybe it's your pride. Maybe it's your insecurity. Maybe it's your unbelief. But remember, God's given you the land to possess. The only thing that will cause you to miss it is not believing your God is big enough. But friends, I want to tell you today, your God is more than enough. So get on the move. Put your coat on if you have to. Of course, it's getting warmer now. So no coats are necessary, but if you have to walk around your literal house seven times and keep your mouth shut while you do, and on that seventh time, let out a shout of faith, you may very well be surprised what walls come tumbling.